There are many really tough things about being a laptop reviewer on YouTube, especially when you move over from a great corporate job like what I did. But there are also some pretty cool things too. One of them is that I can go into our storage room and pick up any laptop as my daily driver. But over the last couple of weeks, I've continuously been drawn to one device, the Surface Laptop 7. In fact, it's become my daily driver. So today, I'm going to share my long-term thoughts on it, why I love it, and all the niggling issues that I discovered with it, which you'll have to live with if you buy one. Now, for the past three years, I've been using the MacBook Pro 14 as my personal laptop. I primarily use it for business management tasks as well as research and script writing. Before I became a full-time YouTuber, I was also traveling a lot, and I needed a portable laptop that was powerful enough for video editing and programming. Plus, I was also playing a lot of Teamfight Tactics to relax. The MacBook Pro 14 did all these tasks exceptionally well. Plus, I'm very fussy when it comes to my laptops. I don't want to hear fan noise while using it, I don't want to feel uncomfortably warm temperatures, nor do I want issues like poor battery life or a bad trackpad. For my use case, Apple products as a whole, they give you the best all-round experience. Roll the clock forward. A lot in my life has changed. I'm a full-time YouTuber and entrepreneur trying to build a sizable business. We now have editors who can edit videos while I travel, and I'm way too busy to do too much gaming. And even if I do, I can play them on gaming laptops that we're currently testing. By the way, if you're new to this channel, one of the unique things about us is we use the laptops we review for everything we do. That way, we can give you a deeper insight into what it's like to actually own them. Anyway, I've been keeping my eyes open for a lighter, more portable laptop for some time now. The MacBook Air was out as I find its keyboard low travel and uncomfortable. Thus far, every Windows laptop I've tried has had annoying issues. That is, until I bought this one, the Surface Laptop 7. It is the first laptop that I've tried that gives you that all-round MacBook Premium experience, but running Windows, and after 30 days of using it, I'm mostly loving it. It looks stunning. It is lighter to carry around than my MacBook Pro 14, and it feels premium, as I've said. The sapphire blue color is so modern and refreshing. It looks better than 99% of laptops I've seen. When it comes to portability, this laptop weighs a little more than a MacBook Air, which is Apple's lightest laptop. However, the Surface has a larger display, so overall, they end up feeling similar to hold due to their weight distribution. The Surface's chassis is very sturdy, and the haptic trackpad feels natural and accurate. Its keyboard is a winner, satisfyingly clicky without being overly noisy, which a lot of clicky keyboards suffer from. The display is incredibly useful for getting real work done. A 13.8 inch panel, which is pretty large for a laptop this size, and it uses a 3 by 2 aspect ratio. This allows you to see more content for applications that go down the page, like websites and Word documents, at least compared to regular laptops. Unlike the MacBook Air, this display has a fast refresh rate, which makes moving content on screen like scrolling a web page just look smoother. This is all nice, but one of the biggest things you'll notice when using a Surface compared to other Windows laptops is that there is no fan noise and very rarely annoying heat you feel. Small laptops powered by Intel or one of AMD's older Zen 3 or 4 processors often feel warm and may have some annoying fan noise. The Surface not having this is huge and just makes it so much more enjoyable to use. This is made possible by using one of Qualcomm's Snapdragon X processors. They are noticeably more power efficient than the processors from Intel or AMD that I just mentioned. Rounding out what I like, I appreciate that there are charging capable ports on both sides of the laptop. No need to run a cable around the back if your power outlet is on the other side. The speakers are also quite good on this laptop. Not the very best out there, but in the top 10% of the ones that I've used. And the SSD is upgradable, which is really nice to see. But what really makes the Surface Laptop 7 so special is its price. You can buy the configuration that I recommend for $1,200. That has the X Plus processor, 16GB of memory, and 512GB of storage. An equivalently spec MacBook Air would cost $1,500, which is $300 more. And that laptop isn't net better. The Surface Laptop has many benefits over it, and the Air has a few benefits over the Surface. I do have a video out comparing the two, which I will link below. But all is not perfect. During my time using the Surface Laptop 7, I noticed many little annoyances. Firstly, the battery life is not as amazing as influencers and the media are claiming. Qualcomm has funneled huge dollars into promoting their processors inside these laptops, and they have likely given talking points to those that they have sponsored. 
Look, the battery life is definitely incrementally better than laptops with Intel and of course one of AMD's older processors, prior to Zen 5 that is. But this laptop, at least for my use case, definitely doesn't deliver all day battery life. Not unless you significantly dim the screen and use it in a way where you are only say sporadically using it throughout the day, i.e. you are often doing something else that allows the laptop to turn off its screen and go into a lower power state. I personally don't use my laptops that way, I tend to use them continuously. So I'd say this one gives me a comfortable 5 hours at best 6. Further on battery life, I'd follow my lead by saving money by buying the X Plus configuration over the X Elite. Its battery life is better and it is still plenty powerful for day to day tasks. The X Elite processor in the Surface Laptop 13 unfortunately it underperforms. You really need to get it in the larger 15 inch chassis to unleash its potential. Now, one important downside of the processor in this laptop is that not all applications will run or run well. It uses a different architecture to most Windows laptops, and some software doesn't run natively. For my day to day tasks, everything worked Office, web browsing, collaboration tools, etc. But occasionally I notice some slowdowns. My guess is that this could be caused by some non native applications running in the background. I also notice some oddities. For example, when I charged the laptop via USB C, it got noticeably warm. Once it was fully charged, though, it cooled back down. Over time, I imagine software will be improved, but be prepared for situations like this. In fact, on several occasions like trying to DJ or playing League of Legends, I had to switch to other laptops as those applications just didn't work at all. A couple of other niggling issues before we wrap. The trackpad although awesome, it does have minor palm rejection issues. The cursor on occasion just jumped to a random spot. Also, the display's pixel density it isn't the best. Small text does not look as sharp as on high resolution displays like those of a MacBook. Now, this display's resolution it is better than on a cheap 1920 by 1200 panel, but not by much. One minor thing though that drives me absolutely batty is Microsoft's brightness up and down buttons. They only change brightness by a microscopic amount. You have to press them a lot or hold them down to change the brightness. And even if you do, there is a lag before it responds. And lastly, the hyped AI features on the new Copilot key didn't use any of them the whole time. So, overall, I really like the Surface Laptop 7 and it has become my go to laptop for office work and general web browsing. If your use case matches this, its value really can't be beat. You get an absolutely premium laptop that looks stunning for around $1000. No other laptop in this price range gets as much right. Dell's XPS is more expensive and its keyboard just doesn't have a physical function row. Samsung's Galaxy Book 4 Edge 14 does have a larger display but its trackpad is worse and on occasion you'll hear some high pitched fan noise. Asus's ZenBook 14s feel noticeably cheaper, and as mentioned, Apple's MacBook Airs, they cost more. If you use more specialist applications, you'll want to be super careful that they run well on this laptop before purchasing one. Or you'll want to be buying this as a secondary device to offset another computer, just like how I'm using it. And to be clear, because of application support and the fact that these new Qualcomm chips don't have powerful graphics, in my case, if I could only own one device, it would still be the MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro chip. If you do decide to buy the Surface Laptop 7 or any laptop, please try to use one of our links. You'll be helping to keep this channel remain unbiased, free from relying on sponsors. You could also become a Patreon subscriber or YouTube member. Plus, if you head over to our website, you'll see all the laptops that we recommend and where to go to get the best deals on them. YouTube is strict time. Get subscribed and smash that like button. Not only does it help this channel grow, but it makes my dearest mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.